Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and do you want your ears to bleed? If you answered yes, this is the perfect video for you. If you answered no, stick around anyways, great video, just plug your ears every once in a while because we are going to be talking about music generation software, a DAW or digital audio workstation called LM. MS. Now this is a world I don't get into much on Game From Scratch. I cover all aspects of game development, but not much on music. And the reason is, I am tone deaf as hell. So I'm going to be generating some terrible, terrible music in this video. But I am also going to showcase you some of the most popular, probably the most popular cross-platform digital audio um, workstation software out there, LMMS. Now if you're interested, it's available at LMMS. MS.io. That name gets harder and harder to say every single time you say it, by the way. Um, now, it used to stand for Linux Multimedia Studio. This is a competitor to programs such as FL Studio. Um, and this one is no longer LMMS as Linux Multimedia Studio because it's no longer just on Linux. So now it is also available for Windows and Mac OS. So technically, it should now be called LWMMS. MS, which is even harder to say. The cool thing is, once again, this is an open source project. It is available under the GPL2 license. That doesn't mean a damn thing to you if you're using this product as an end user. If you're looking to modify the source code, look into that. There's some caveats with the GPL license. But to an end user, this is basically, you can just think of it as free software. So let us jump in and take a look at this free software. So here we go. This is LMMS. This is what you get when you first launch it. It is very scary. It's a daunting program, but it's actually not that bad once you start figuring out what's going on here. So first things first, let's look at the song editor. This is where your song begins life. Let's actually get rid of the other things. We can get them back easily enough if we need them. So this guy here, this is the heart blood of your program. What you've got going on here is various different tracks you put together over a timeline, and this is where your music comes from. Now let's make this a little bit simpler. First off, I'm gonna go back to that windowed approach, and we're gonna get rid of these things. So we've got an oscillator track. I don't even wanna cover that. There's a sample track. I don't wanna cover that either. An automated track, don't want to cover that right now either. So we're going to stick with just a beat or bass line. Everyone understands a beat or a bass line. So we're going to just click right here and then boom. So here you see we've got the bass line, uh, the beat bass line editor up right now. And you can have multiples, by the way, and you can switch between them right here. So if I dropped in another beat or bass line, we'd switch between them in this editor window right at the top there. And what we've got in this beat or a bass line is a kicker drum. You know a kicker drum, if you've ever experienced one, let's put one in. So we're going to put a beat in in our pattern and press play. So there you go. Let me just turn my own end up so I can slightly hear it. And then drop a couple more in. Not really that exciting, but ba bum ba bum Bum, 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 bum. Now we can actually go ahead and play with that kicker setting. So we'll just click it here and you see we start getting even more complexity going on here. We got a nice little keyboard we can preview different sounds with. We can switch out how that guy is going to sound. So we can change up frequency. We can add some distortion to it and now play. So now you're seeing our bass line is sounding substantially different than where we started. And there we go. Beginning of ear bleeding begins now. So now we're going to have it actually in our song. So we're going to have this much time worth of that bass line playing. So there you see, it's just going to kind of keep going. All right, perfect. So there we have a beat bass line for our song. And again, we could keep adding more and more and more of them. We could also, again, at any time, open it back up and edit it. We can also add other aspects to our beat or our bass line. You see over here, we got a bunch of stuff kind of hidden down the side here. Here are our instruments. We're gonna get back to that in a second. And here you've got uh, various different projects. I'll show you a more complex example, something that doesn't make your ear bleed later on. But what we've got here is really awesome. This is your samples. This is stuff, various different things we can work with. So we've got, say, drum samples. If you click on something and hold it down, you can hear it. So there we go, we got a nice clap. Let's just drag the clap over here. And now we have it as a secondary on our beat or our bass line. So let's go ahead and add it at different interviews, so the intervals. So there we go. Now we got a couple of claps going on in our bass line. So you don't like that frequency, let's lower it down. So we've just got two claps. There you go. So you can keep layering things in. You can bring in these sound samples and there are a ton of samples to work from out of the box. 
Obviously, you can see here, these are just AUG files. These are AUG Vorbis. You can bring in your own sound effects and you can put them into your uh, base, uh, your beat line right there, or you can put it right into your main soundtrack. So something, anything going on over here. Now let's get back to that. So earlier on, we had a bunch of tracks and I kind of deleted them all to go backwards. It's because it's easier to start from the beginning and add difficulty. So let's go back up here and we will take a look at what else we had going on here. So you see here, we got a bunch of different uh, instruments plugins that we can work with. And a lot of this stuff is retro stuff here. So you see here, um, Game Boy Sound Emulator. We've got Sid, the mighty uh, Commodore 64 music chip. So this is emulating the MOS chips that were inside of the Commodore 64. We've got the oscillator that we started with. We got a bunch of different things here. We got the Zin guy. This guy can do like a ton of different stuff. Um, and you basically, and then there's the kicker we worked with. We can use the kicker just like any other instruments if we so wanted to. So here was, for example, let's say we wanted a nest-like music sound. We could bring that in. And then here we go. Now we just gotta basically start creating a track. You click here so that we've got a track started. So again, in your timeline, and then just click into it. And now you can see, this is where you can just start writing your music. Like so. Uh, and we can go once again. So right now I still have the kicker controls open, but if I go back to my track and we double click on the end or we single click on the end, there you can see the settings for our uh, Nintendo, um, uh, simulator or, um, yeah, instrument, I guess would be the right word. And now when we start playing notes, you can preview them here. You're getting that Nintendo sound and we can come up here. We can start, we can drag things around and get a slightly different audio sound. And you can do that with just about anything. And then once you've got a sound that you like, what you start doing is basically painting notes. So you can paint notes or you can paint chords and you can paint notes at a different size. So you got here, you can pick your note length. So you can have a half note, a quarter note, an eighth note. Obviously the lower the fraction, the smaller the note. So if we do an eighth note, you'll see it's just, it's two sections of a 16th. So if you want to change out the fidelity here, you can change that there. By the way, you can also change the overall um, RPM or speed of your song right here and that will change globally. So if you want your baseline and your, your track to play slower or faster, you just switch it out with the RPM and it will change it there. Um, if you don't like a note, just right click it and it's gone. So let's go back here and we'll make this into quarter notes and then we'll just start basically layering them in. So you can put a couple in, you can scroll up and down so you can change out your octaves. So you can also go quite low. And then there is your sound. Oh, again, we could have also switched into chords, a ton of different chords going on here. And then this will put an entire chord in. And then when you, you wanna go ahead, you can check out what it sounds like. So, I did warn you about the ear bleeding, sorry about that. So there we go, we've just created a very simple track and then you can see the duration of the track is there. So if we want our, our drum beat to be the same length, just kind of match it out like so. And there you go. <laughs> I'm so sorry for your ears. But you see, we got our drum beat, our clapping, and we got our nest music going on in the front. And that's kind of it. You basically just keep layering in complexity as you want it. You want to make it more and more detailed. You can do so. Also, at the same time, we come back down here. Okay, that's just my file system. But here, we've got a ton of different presets. So if we wanted a SID prefix for someone else has already done the work, we can have their configuration. Um, so then if we, we could actually literally copy and paste this guy, this these notes out and down into this guy, um, or we could just start authoring here. And here we're using Madmind's pre-configured settings. So when you start working on it, you've got a bunch of pre-config settings that you can work from here. And most of the instruments we saw there, uh, such as the Ness, the Nesclean right here, we've got um, all automatically set up. So they've done, they've made the configurations over here for you, uh, which is really quite cool. Now I'm not gonna make you guys bleed anymore. So I'll get rid of, I'll get rid of all of the stuff that I've created so far, except for our lovely beaten bass line. And I'm gonna show you another kind of interesting track and that's the automation track. So come here, you'll see you've got various different options here. So bass, uh, the sampling, and then we got automation. Now automation is kind of confusing at first. So let's go back to our beat. And you'll notice here, when we were looking at stuff, all kinds of stuff, there's all kinds of these knobs around. And what you can do with an automation track is basically control those things 
over time. And the simplest way I can kind of illustrate this is like volume. So what I'm gonna do, we've got our automation track right here. Oops. So let's make the automation track match the duration of our thing. And what I could do is just hold down the control. You'll see hold down the control with a, with a, um, a knob. And that's literally what it says, by the way, if you explain it all the way. And what I can do is I can grab something like the, um, the kicker. So here I'll go ahead, grab the kicker, hold down control, and I can bring in the volume setting and then into here. So now with the automation track, I just go ahead and select it. And this gives us control over the volume as we progress through. So what I can do is basically change and then make things really quiet. So now what that's ultimately doing is controlling that knob as time elapses. So you can set up as many automation tracks as you want to control any of the settings for any of the things. So if we wanted to control the frequency slope of this guy using a graph like this, you can do so as well. You've also got control over the smoothness of the graphs. Um, and you know, if you just want to change things out, you can basically just, so we're going to make things really quiet here. And then you're seeing the results. And then we're going to make it quite loud again. Like so, and stop. So it's gonna drop off in volume, and then it'll pick right back up in volume. And you can do this for any of the um, the knobs of the sliders you see anywhere. That's what an automation track is all about, automating the settings of uh, an instrument or um, a track over time. All right, so that is that. The only final thing to really kind of showcase here, um, to go back over here, there is a ton to this program. Again, I, I'm just sort of, skating over the surface to show you what is possible and how the tool works. I, I can't show you how to make things sound good because again, that is beyond my particular skill set. Uh, but all right, let's get rid of our automation track and I'm going to bring in one more option and that is this guy. So vestige, we'll bring in a vestige track. And now what vestige is, is a VST or um, oh, I forget exactly what it stands for virtual sound technology or something like that. This is a standard interchange format for um, instruments. Now, unfortunately, it only works under wine and under uh, Windows 32. It, it does not work on Mac. Um, but if you've got a VST plugin, which thankfully I do, I have one here for guitars. So let's just go ahead and showcase it. So they are under Steinberg VST plugins. And here we go. So this is a guitar plugin and here you can see it in action. So if you want to emulate a real world um, sound or, or something that isn't, you know, being done through one of these other options, you can drop in a VST player or Vestige. This will host your, your VSTs. And then here you've got a guitar. Now this is a freebie version of it, but even then the free version of it has a staggering amount of settings. And once again, you can control these settings uh, using automation. You can use guitar tab if you so wish. Go back to strumming or main like so. Or you can completely ignore this user interface whatsoever. So here you can say, you know, turn off or, sh or show the inst. And then so now we have this guitar track going on. We can just come in here just like before, open the piano roll switch into yeah chords are fine and then we just basically we got a guitar so start dropping a few chords in so make sure we're in edit mode like so and also keep in mind that the length matters also down here the volume matters or the velocity so now boom there very simple guitar playing and again we can overlap notes make a more complex sound. Again, I have no musical talent whatsoever, but if you want to tap into the world of VSTs, there are a kabillion of them. So you're gonna notice out of the box, a lot of LMMS is about retro um, audio formats and you know throwbacks and so things like, again, emulating the sounds from a Game Boy or a NES or a Commodore 64. So if that's the sound you're going for, it's great and it's an option, but if you wanna come in here and get like authentic sounding um, instruments, you can also bring in VST files like we just saw there. You've also got um, options for bringing in things like uh, Gravis Ultrasound, an old school um, uh, sound card, you can bring in Gus files, uh, you can bring in various different other files there, you can bring in mallets for things to bang on. Uh, there's a bunch of different plugins to play around with. We also have access to SFXR, this is one of those things I actually showcased on my channel in the past. And you got a ton of different options for SFXR as well. So, and then once again, if you don't like 
any of the stuff we're working with, you can come back here and grab in uh, presets. Where'd the presets go? Presets. Presets are all available here, so you can get a nice pre-configured, good-sounding audio as opposed to the crap that I've been working with. So if you're working, so not everything has it. So you'll notice the SFXR that we're in right now, it currently doesn't have presets, but uh, a lot of the things that we were working with definitely do. So if, if you want to start off and you want to get a neat sound, but you can't make anything work, maybe check out the presets. It's a good place to go from there. So the cool thing is this thing loads with presets, also a ton of samples. So if you want... Um, the various guitar sounds, drum sounds, uh, you know, in your loops you can work with. You've got a ton of different stuff to work with here. Again, just hold down your left mouse button to actually hear a preview of it. And that's about it. Now, finally, and if you're just starting off, what you probably want to do is come to this first tab right here, My Projects. And when you save your project, it'll be shown here. But you'll notice there are a ton of actual samples to get you started. Now... I'm hesitant to actually play any of these because I don't know what copyright status is or anything like that. And YouTube is a weird beast. But as you can see, they've set up much more complex. And some of these, you know, scroll for miles and miles and miles. But you can see, again, everything we just looked at, it's just done by someone who has a modicum of musical talent instead of, you know, me. So here we go. Here you can see a song that someone generated and the various different pieces that go together to make it work. You can check. Okay, let's go here to where it gets a little bit more complicated. So there, if you want to go in here and like get your hands dirty to start things off, just come in, check out some of the samples other people have done, and uh, you know it's probably the best place to go from there. But when you first come into this guy, you look at it and go, oh my god, this is terrifying. But once you've actually started playing around with it, it's not so bad. At the same time, you'll also find you can check in the manual for it. Um, when you're dealing with something that has a keyboard like this, you can actually play the keyboard using your key. So that was W and E. So various different keys on your keyboard have mapped to the actual key here. Also, you could plug in a MIDI, MIDI keyboard and play yourself if you happen to have such a device. Um, but yeah, that is LMMS. When you're done, when you've got the audio the way you want it, basically just go ahead. Uh, you can do an export or you can export out tracks or you can even export out MIDI. When you export out, you've got Wave. OGG and MP3 file formats. And then you're ready to basically just slot that sucker into your game and you're good to go. So that is LMMS Studio. Uh, I hope you guys found that interesting. If you are looking for an audio tool, this is the one that the majority of the community seems to recommend as a starting point. It is completely free, it is cross-platform, and it is open source, so it's hard hard to disagree with that. I also, I haven't experienced a single crash or problem other than, um, uh, special effects. Oh, I didn't get into that. We've also got special effects that you can apply. So for example, you can add effects into and have them all chained together. Um, this is the only area where I've run into problems is on this special effect right here, a vinyl effect. Well, there you can see my problem as soon as I add it. So that's supposed to emulate. All right, turn you off, turn you off. It's supposed to emulate the sound of vinyl, but for some reason it is totally and utterly broken right now. But that is the only problem I ran into across the board. As you saw, there are a ton of different effects that can be chained together. So if you wanted to come in here and say uh, bass boost, so let's just go ahead and remove that guy. If you want to add some bass to your overall experience, just come in here, you can bring in a bass booster, and then you can control the amount the frequency, the gain, the ratio, and so on. And once again, you can use an automation track to control these over time as well. And that's kind of it. Uh, again, it's one of those programs you could actually learn to use it in a day and then spend a lifetime mastering it. Yeah, that's kind of the, the world of music and why it's so inaccessible to me. But if you, unlike me, are not tone deaf, this is kind of a great place to start. Again, it's completely free. It's probably available on your operating system, and it's quite good. All right, so if you have another recommendation for me to check out in the digital audio workstation space, I know uh, Reaper is definitely talked about a lot. Um, FL Studios is definitely talked about a lot. I've covered a couple kind of offhanded as they've been in previous packages. But if you have a suggestion for me to cover, I, I've been ignoring music for too long on this station. Uh, so it, it, let me know what you recommend. Comments down below. And uh, I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.